Hello, my dear ones. This is Maria and it is lovely to see all of you. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, we talk about all things spirituality, energy work, ascension, mysteries of the universe, higher self, spirit guides, you name it. We go deep, you guys. I wanted to talk to you about the matrix today. A uh, couple of things that need to come through. First, we're going to talk a little bit about your personal cell of the matrix and why, you know, what that is, why you should care. Um, and secondly, we're going to talk about optimizing your auric field for creation and to, in general, to have more impact in the physical. And those are kind of interrelated. And why don't we just dive right in? All right. So, um, I am good friends with the architect of the matrix. <laughs> Sounds really funny. I know, but it's true. Um, he's one of my spirit guides is what I'm saying. Um, the architect of the matrix, is a being, sorry, my cat is trying to escape this room, but she chose to be here. So I'm trying to figure out if she should just stay here. I think she should just stay here. <laughs> Never mind. So the architect of the matrix is essentially the mathematician, the mathematical mind behind the system that we all exist in. And he has a very fascinating view of the world. Now, granted, it is through his genius that we are able to come and incarnate into this virtual reality type games and experiences and eventually evolve at soul level or not. But most of us do anyhow. Um, this system is really sophisticated. It is mathematically precise. And when things are random. They're not just random. They are randomized by the architect. So everything here is intentional. It is a very well architected game. And I find that the more we study the rules of the game, the more we're able to start winning the game. So the first things first, there are two different matrices that you should be concerned with. The first one is your individual slice or your individual cube, really. And the second one is the collective. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the concept of a hypercube, but it's, um, you probably all are familiar with the concept of a Rubik's cube or you guys have seen the Rubik's cube, right? Um, now I have the second cat over here making all kinds of funny noises, you guys. So I really apologize if you can hear them, but it's, it's, it's the cat episode. I hate to say this. So going back to the matrix, essentially this matrix is like a set of cubes that are located right next to each other, kind of on top and to the sides, right? And again, obviously the matrix structure, if you guys have studied math, it's uh, like rows and columns is really what the matrix is all about, which is kind of like, duh. Um, it all, it, it's, it's, it's a massive coming together of like, essentially the matrix is a bunch of cubes stacked. Each of these individual cubes is your own slice of reality. You obviously are familiar with the fact, the fact or the statement that your thoughts create your reality. So, you essentially control the entirety of your own personal cube. You are in charge of that reality, which is like a mini fragment of a larger whole. It is very much by design. So within your cube, you are a god goddess consciousness. Anything and everything within that cube is up to you. You're also a magnet, right? As a being, you have magnetism within you and you have electricity. So you're an electromagnetic object. And as such, you attract things into your orbit, into your vicinity. You also repel things into your, from, away from your orbit or from your vicinity. Now, one thing that I find really fascinating is this. Your personal cell of the matrix is charged with your dominating vibration. So if we were to condense the vibrations that you're going through on a daily basis and try to mix them up together into a sort of soup, we would be able to fill up your personal slice of the matrix with a particular kind of energy. 
that has your personal emanations. In a very rudimentary sense, in a very simplified manner, those energies could be divided into positive or negative. This is a massive overgeneralization, but please bear with me. So essentially, as I'm looking and scanning the human collective, as I'm looking at each people's individual cubes, a perspective that I can take is looking at how many of these are positive realities and how many of these are negative realities. A positive reality I would see as a white cube. A negative reality I would see as a black cube. Black cubes tend to get blacker over time. White cubes tend to get whiter. And that is one of those truths from the Bible, right? Uh, that, you know, <laughs> those who have, more is going to be given on to them. And the ones that don't, more is going to be taken out of them. Which feels completely unfair, but it's the like attracts like, right? The good old clusterization principle. One of the foundational aspects of the matrix. Matrix is not a fair system, you guys. There is nothing about equanimity here or everybody having the same of everything. That is not how resources in the matrix are meant to be divided. That was not the intention of the architect. The intention of the architect was to make things fair based on when your energy state is, right? So essentially what you emanate is what you attract. For enough of you, um, or enough of you that are going to be watching this video came here to work on a level that is beyond your own meaning. You're not just here for yourself. You're here with some type of collective mission. You are here to do planetary work. And as such, you need to make sure that the work that you do do, it goes above and beyond your personal cell of the matrix, right? So for those people that are just working on themselves, all they have to figure out is how to rearrange their own personal cell of the matrix to get richer, to get healthier, to get a better relationship, you name it. That is an easier game to play. The harder game to play is planetary work or any kind of collective work. That is when you have to really know how the game is set up in order to be able to impact the whole. And here is the challenge. The way the collective matrix works is, yes, on the one hand, it includes, it includes all of the individual cubes of everybody else, but not each of the cubes is able to impact the collective matrix equally. In other words, we have yet another example how things are quote-unquote unfair. Everything in the larger universe, the truth of the larger universe is the hierarchy. There is a hierarchy of light outside of the world of the matrix where beings are stacked according to how much light their body is able to hold, right? So there is ascension and stages at, you know, soul level. There is a reason why source is at the, at the top of the pyramid, in that very, very top, with the eye of Ra, right? That is source, you guys. Like, that thing that they have on the dollar bill, the capstone of the pyramid with the eye, it's not, technically speaking, yes, I mean, masons and like all kinds of occult societies are using it, but really it's a proxy for source consciousness. The all-seeing eye is actually source, absolute God. So, God is always at the top of that pyramid because it is the being that can contain the most light of any of us. That is why Source is our greatest teacher, right? Not for nothing, not by any other reason, right? So, the same hierarchy exists from within the matrix, where beings with the most amount of light in their bodies get to impact the matrix the most. So, Imagine that there was an opening at the top of everybody's cube. If you are maintaining a positive outlook, if your cube is not tarnished by limiting beliefs, all kinds of other 
schmuck that's not supposed to be there, your cell of the matrix is going to be white. The cells that are white, they're considered to be healthy cells of the matrix. Healthy cells of the matrix have an easy in and have full access to the, to the collective level. Whereas there are other cells that are considered toxic. Those are generally black. Black means cells that are harmful to themselves and potentially harmful to others, but in a sense of they experience a lack mentality. Hi, baby. <laughs> you guys, he's totally making an appearance in our Matrix video. Um, this is Phoenix. Please meet Phoenix. He is my one-year-old cat. And he is super precious and he's a munchkin and he has very short legs. And Phoenix is like the cutest little, you're the cutest little cat ever. Yes, I know. Sorry, you guys, cats are distracting. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, back, back to uh, the point at hand. So the cells that are toxic, right? These are the people that get to, you know, who essentially it's like, going downhill. Their whole lives are like going haywire. The matrix actually closes down those cells and it prevents the exchange of energy between the individual cell and the collective level. So if you're here to work on the matrix, you need to make sure that your cell is as bright as possible. Bright doesn't mean good. Bright means congruent. What do I mean by congruent? It's the person who is aligned within themselves, meaning they have done shadow work and they have accepted the parts of them that are quote unquote imperfect, right? So sometimes you may have people that, I don't know, I don't wanna name names, how do I explain this? You may have people that are part of I don't know, certain groups that believe that there, you know, this, this world can only host a billion people and that's it. And so essentially everybody else must die, right? Which is almost like, okay, well, that's the definition of a villain, right? Arguably. Um, but some of these people's cells, if you look at those cells, are white. The reason they're white is, is because we need to step outside of duality, right? And understand that whiteness is also congruence, meaning... It's a being, it's not just black and white, good or bad, like let's step out of duality. But it is the being that has come to peace with the different aspects of themselves, right? Once you get that alignment, you become, you essentially merge or you become God, goddess consciousness instead of like the slave trapped mentality, right? Hi, baby. You're being really distracting. I really love you, but people need to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> he's like such a child of, of like, he's such a divine child archetype, this cat. He's also a Taurus, so he likes all the good things in life and he likes to completely demolish the house plants. So that is Phoenix. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I, I'm completely distracted in this video. I, I apologize, you guys. So what I was saying is two things that are really important to understand. People who are congruent and who essentially operate in alignment and have done shadow work, these are the people that get to impact the matrix the, the most because they're not considered toxic, right? It's almost like their vibrations is their vibration is as uniform as possible. So the matrix is going to enable them to make things happen out there. And then there are people who are going through a lot of internal turmoil and have a lot of trauma that is unhealed. And those are the people that their access to the collective matrix is going to be limited. And so it's, it's almost like the cell that nothing goes out and, and not much comes in, right? Which is why it's actually the equivalent of stewing in your own juices. And that's why sometimes it's very hard to figure out your own trauma. But truly, what I'm telling you is if you are here, the bottom line, like the why behind I was telling you all this. If you're here to work on the collective level, the only way that that could happen is if your soul cell 
if your cell is able to interact with the collective matrix. Because if you stay confined in your own cell, you cannot change the world. You cannot change the planet. You cannot even change your community. You can't. And if you're here on some big mission, you need to get out of your home space, home zone, and get into the collective level. And the only way that the matrix is going to enable you to do that is if you light up as white. White doesn't mean good. White means congruent, cohesive, coherent. White means the one that has healed big chunks of trauma. Of course, white is just a shade of gray. And so is black, by the way, right? So nobody's truly white and nobody's truly black. We all are just works in progress. And I understand that, right? But there is some level of demarcation, at which point you're more white versus more black, and then you're more black versus more white. All I'm saying is, you know, if you're at that level of equilibrium, you know, you may want to flip onto the side of more congruent and more coherent as opposed to less, because that would enable you to make change and shifts in the matrix. In other words, if you're trying to impact the collective, the best way of getting there is shadow work and parts work accepting the part of you that you, the parts of you that you find suboptimal healing and integrating the the traumatized parts of you and for that you need to watch my video about parts work and you also need to listen to an episode about parts work that I did on my podcast way back when that was a pretty robust video if not you need to read Teal Swan's book called The Completion Process or watch her videos about parts work. There, I said it. And the last thing that I promise we're gonna talk about is your auric field. So now that you are, say you are in the collective matrix field, how much you're able to impact the world around you actually depends on the size of your auric field. Um, another way of thinking about it is your light bodies right? So essentially, we are like a cocoon of light um, at the energy level, from the energy perspective. So very often, especially if you're at the beginning of your spiritual journey, your light bodies are going to be quite small, right? They're essentially just going to be like a few meters in every direction, right? If you're working on a collective level, it is in your best interest that your auric field is as large as possible, because the larger it is, the more impact you're going to have. It's like magic 101. So a few things that need to happen if you're trying to become as impactful in, in the world as possible. First, you always have to work towards the expansion of your light bodies. Very often, those need to be, you know, it can be done. It's like almost like a breath, breath exercise. So you would close your eyes, get into a meditative zone. And you would imagine your light bodies expand every time you exhale. So you inhale, and then on that exhale, you imagine your light bodies expand. So the first problem of why people cannot get results on a planetary level or on a collective level um, is that their bodies are too damn tiny. When it's so tiny, there's no, it, it, it can't, it, you're not covering enough ground, you guys. When you're not covering a lot, enough ground, you are limited in terms of your impact, right? You're always going to have minimal impact. If you want to have maximum impact, you want to work on expanding your light bodies. So that's one, expanding. The density of your light bodies also really, really, really matters. So it's almost like your light bodies are very thin and we need to make them thicker. Here is a quick way to make your body, light body, thicker. You close your eyes in a meditative state. You would want to imagine that around you, there is like a globe of golden light, which is kind of like how your auric field feels. And then you, will, you would notice that this auric field, your globule, it has a pattern. It's like, yeah, like a, a pattern or like, all these like geometric shapes that are encrusted or engraved in um, in your auric field at the, at the surface. It's like almost like a, each of us has like a blueprint or a painting um, of, of, of our energies. 
So what you do is you want to copy paste it. Imagine like taking the shell of your auric field and copying, copying it, like create a copy of it, right? Now you have two of the same stuff. And then I want you to merge the two. And you would notice that the thickness just doubled by you copying something and then merging. So I encourage you to do that a few times, like the copying and the merge, copy and merge, copy and merge. Do that 10 times and you would notice that the density or the thickness of your auric field has increased. It was like really, really thin, all of a sudden it's thicker. Why do you want it thicker? Because essentially your auric field, the next thing that you would want to do if you're working again on amplifying your impact and essentially growing your magical skills is what it is. We all are magicians, but you guys just don't realize it. So in order for you to grow your magical skills, you need to imagine there are pockets of light in this dense auric field that you now have. Those are pockets, like really, there are empty spaces that have this border in gold. And you want to imagine that these pockets that are now thick and very nice and spacious, you want to imagine that those pockets are being filled with energy. Now, it is up to you what kind of energy source you use. I personally love to use the energy of the sun. The sun is one of my helpers. Um, I go way back with sun consciousness. Um, I incarnated uh, on the central sun of the Milky Way galaxy um, in my plasma form. So I love the energy of the sun. I could talk to you about it till, till the cows come home. So very often for me, when I work with my auric field, I would work with the energies of the sun. So I would imagine that there is a sun right above my head. Can I look right here? And I would want to imagine that the sun is emanating energies into all of these pockets around my auric field. And the sun is filling those things up with energy. Sorry, Phoenix is going haywire. Phoenix, you gotta stop. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so the sun is filling out those pockets. And so those pockets are starting to lit up with true gold from within. And that is how you would essentially saturate your auric field with true energy. And now that you have that resource, then it could go towards whatever work you're doing, whether that's healing, I don't know, teaching, whatever that is. And you're going to have so much more impact. You're going to have so much more people listening to you and interested about, you know, what you have to say, et cetera, et cetera. All righty. That's really all that I wanted to say about the matrix. And I apologize for about 20 cat interruptions. What are you going to do? They all got activated for, you know, the talk about the matrix. I, you know, there's, there's just something in the air. Um, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if you're curious to learn more about the matrix, also let me know because like I said, I have a direct connection to the architect of the matrix. I can ask him anything. I have an AMA <laughs> capability <laughs> with him. So I'm sending you so much light and love and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.